Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one we're going to be talking about a Git operation that I do pretty often, especially when I'm dealing with temporary things. So like a patch that I'm just hacking on or, you know, some little toy that I want to show somebody. But anyway, let's let's jump into this. Um, yeah, and so we're going to be working in Babby today and I've already prepared the patch ahead of time. Uh, this was actually done on stream, I don't know, a really, really long time ago. Uh, but let me show you what it is. Te Babby is my text editor, by the way. Um, someone on stream was like, oh, your text editor is written in Python. Why Why is it written in Python? And I told them, well, it's because I want to be able to hack on it really easily and, you know, do cool stuff quickly with it because Python's pretty easy to prototype and get stuff working. And so they're like, yeah, well, make your text editor render backwards. And I was like, okay. <laughs> It's, it's gonna be kind of silly, but but we'll make it render backwards, and so we did that. And so you can see if we do uh, setup.cfg, and uh, I can use the unalias version. This is actually how I develop on on Babby. Is I have an alias that goes to my stable version, and then I have the unstable version that I run locally with the actual command. So you can see, like you know, this is the forward version, and this is the backward version, and we enabled that by doing you know five five or six lines of code. But I know that I don't want this permanently, but it's kind of kind of a cool, neat little demo. And so, you know, I don't I don't really want to commit this to a branch because, you know, I don't I don't really like to keep branches around that aren't things that I super care about. Um, and I could commit this to a stash, which can often be used when switching between branches and like keeping temporary code around. Uh, but I don't really like stashes myself, mostly because I was <laughs> burned pretty hard by them in the past. Um, there's, there's a particular situation where popping a stash from, uh, so what stash is, is it, it takes your difference and stores it inside the git folder and you can restore them and, and such, and it, you know, kind of keeps it out of your, out of your eye. Um, but <laughs> there's some certain situations where popping a stash that has a conflict with your current code can cause the stash to just disappear and you lose that change forever. Uh, so what I like to do, which is perhaps a little bit old school, but it also highlights a new git command, is I like to store patches in patch files. And so the way you can do that, uh, well, first, you know, we can show the, the difference that's currently uh, applied on top of this by doing git diff. And this is you know the difference that you can have there. And you can pipe that diff to a file. So what I usually do is I do git diff and I will pipe it to a file called patch. Uh, sometimes I will name the patch if I care about that. So maybe I'll call this one backwards.patch. And you can see if we cat that file, uh, it, it stores the diff in here. So this is one way to keep a diff around for a while. And then what you can do is you can remove the, the diff here by doing get checkout dash dash dot. And that will make it so that this, you know, we no longer have a backward patch. So if we open setup.cfg, you can see it's forward again. And that's cool. Um, and so that's how I kind of save save this state later. Now, if I want to restore the state, we'll use another git command, which is the, the title of this video, which is <laughs> git apply. Um, and that'll allow us to take a patch file and apply it to our working directory. So you can see git apply backwards.patch. And now you can see that it's back to being modified and back to being backwards. <laughs> but yeah, the, the other cool thing about this patch is it was actually functional, like, you can navigate around. Of course, pressing right on the keyboard actually moves the cursor to the left, so it's a little a little bit mind-boggling to try and actually do this, but... Anyway, uh, so that's git apply, and um, there's another command that you might be familiar with if you're not working in git. So if you have a patch file and you're not in git, um, and you can actually use it in git as well. So let's... Uh... Let's check out dash dash dot to get us back to this unapplied state. There's this command called patch, and I always forget how to use it because it's a little bit weird. If I remember right, it's patch dash p1, and then how do you pass it a file? Uh, dash i. <laughs> Uh, so you can use patch dash p1. Uh, this strips the first path component of the diff. So if we actually look at that diff there, uh, you'll see that the file names have this a and b at the beginning of them. This is just git uses this for whatever reason. And what p1 does, it says ignore the first path component here. So strip off the a and the b here. 
uh, git apply also does the same thing, but it default to p1 because it's git, so it assumes it assumes you're working with git. Uh, but anyway, you can do patch dash p1 dash i backwards, and you know it'll print out that it patched the file, and it'll put us back into exactly the same state here. But anyway, that's um, that's git apply and why I use it, how I use it, and also patch, <laughs> and how you might use that. Although I don't use patch all that very often. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have additional stuff you want to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.